Hello, YouTube friends and family. I, as many of you know, I am getting ready to head south. And when I say south, I'm talking all the way south. Uh, we are about to board a commercial flight to Buenos Aires. And then a few days later, we take a charter flight to Ushuaia. And then eventually we find a barco gigante. We get on a giant ship and we head south to Antarctica. This is a trip really unlike any other I've ever done. The closest I would say that I've ever come to a place like Antarctica, even though it's in the opposite direction, was uh, sort of the wilds of Alaska. But this is, Antarctica is arguably the most unique place in the, on the planet. And consequently, it takes a little bit of preparation that I'm not used to going through. This house is a complete disaster zone. As my wife and I try to make sense of what we're gonna take, I'm actually checking a bag for the first time in my adult life. So. That tells you how much stuff I have with me. Also note that it's summer down there, so Buenos Aires could be 90 degrees. So I have to pack from anywhere from 90 degrees all the way down to however cold it gets in Antarctica. I think technically it might be colder here in the mornings in Santa Fe than it is in Antarctica, but it's a different kind of cold. Here we've got high and dry and sunny, and down there you're gonna have winds off the Southern Ocean, and it's gonna get, it's gonna be cold, and so, I'm gonna tell you, I think the five things that I am pretty much feel like they are essentials for me to go and do this trip. I'm, I'm bypassing things like hats, sunglasses, gloves. Those obviously are gonna be important, but the five that I have on the list, maybe they're a bit juicier. Maybe they're more interesting, I don't know. But these are the top five. Let's start with the biggest, heaviest, and bulkiest of the five. Number one, I am taking this. One of the biggest aspects of being on this trip is the, are the birds. There are, I downloaded a bird list for where we're gonna be and there must be 75 to 100 different species that I've never seen before. There are some on the list like the wandering albatross. If I can see one of those, I'll feel like the entire trip was a success. So this is a Fujifilm 200 millimeter F2 that has a color coordinated, mind you, 1.4 teleconverter that basically has never been off the lens since I bought it because this is really, the reason I'm taking this are for the birds. This lens, longest lens I've ever had, the largest lens I've ever had in my entire 30 plus year photo history. And that's a Fuji X-H2, which is their 40 megapixel camera. The combination of these two things, one, the files are gorgeous, but two, 40 megapixels, I to me is really, more than I need, but it's nice when you consider that what I'm doing with these photographs is I'm not trying to show off my bird photography skills. I'm secretly building an archive of birds. As we know, the planet is changing, the species are changing, that's always been part of our history. And I like the idea that I'm just recording things one at a time, one species at a time. And to do so, especially from the deck of a ship where you are limited in terms of where you can move, this baby is gonna be with me. The downside is I have to carry it, and let's be quite honest, it's heavy. Number two, keeping with the bird theme, number two is my Nikon Trailblazer binoculars. Now my guess is these might be the smallest pair on the entire ship because birders tend to have like really good binoculars, and I'm not saying that the Nikon 10 by 25 waterproof Trailblazers are not good, they are good but they're tiny and that's one of the reasons why when you're carrying something like this, you look for ways to save weight in other areas. Now I have a larger set of binoculars that I'm not taking with me because these have proven really nice and the great thing about these is they're small enough to fit in my pocket and I have these with me all the time, 24 hours a day, no matter where I'm at, no matter what bag I have with me, I always have these with me and I love glassing for birds. If I was looking for a company for sponsorship, yeah, Swarovski, I I'll take it. I'll take sponsorship. Not that they're coming to me anytime soon, but last year at a birding event in Ohio, I went to the Swarovski trailer where they, they pull a trailer behind a four x four and you can get in and get your hands on binoculars. And I looked at a pair of $4,000 binoculars and I said, who in their right mind would ever buy something like that? And then I looked through them and I said, oh, okay, I get it. I would buy those. Maybe, maybe not, uh, but they're, they're grand. So I'm taking the Nikons as my, as my binocular of choice for this trip. Number three, and this is no big surprise for any of you who know me at all, the journal. I will be taking my trusty journal with me and my Oto ceramic rollerball pen. I've only got one of these. I've gotta be protective of it. Writing to me has always been the high art. It is of the creative experience of across all genres, whether it's photography, art, design, illustration. 
I've always considered writing to be the high art. It's my first love. Writing is my first love prior to photography. I'm not saying I'm good at it. I'm saying I really enjoy it and it's something that I do every day. For some reason, the concept of writing on this trip is overwhelming my mind at this point, even more so than the photography and the shooting motion footage and all that. The writing, for some reason, is kind of haunting me. And it could be because I'm reading End of the Earth by Peter Matiasen, who's one of my favorite authors. And that book is just terrifying because one, the guy's made multiple voyages. He's very knowledgeable. He's a great writer. He's way better than I will ever be when it comes to writing. And so I feel a bit intimidated, but also excited by what he's put into those books. All right, that was one, Fuji. Number two, Nikon. Number three, Journal. Number four, I'm very fortunate because my co-founder, or the co-founder of AG23, was at one time the director of Beyond Clothing out of Seattle. And Beyond Clothing is what I would call a smaller outdoor, more of a boutique outdoor clothing brand. I am a huge fan of their clothing. It is completely, in my mind, overbuilt. This is a Beyond reversible jacket that I'm wearing. I've got an entire closet full of Beyond Clothing thanks to my friend who in 2019, pre-COVID, uh, when we decided to do AG23 together, he just loaded me up with all the winter clothing gear I would ever need. Me not even really knowing that I was gonna be moving full-time to Northern New Mexico, and then also going on trips like the, to the Antarctic. So what you're looking at here, number four on the list is the Beyond Bright Red, as you can see. The Beyond Cetra L7 or Layer 7 jacket. This is a very, very, very warm jacket. In fact, I, I think there's eight layers to the Beyond clothing system. There is an L8, which is their polar jacket, which probably would come in handy on this trip, but the seven is gonna be plenty for me. I have a sinking suspicion. And this jacket is super warm. Even going down in the layering system to six, five, four, these things are incredibly warm. They're small, light, and packable. And these things, again, are overbuilt. I've told this story before, but during COVID, uh, I think it was early 2020, I basically wore the same pants and the same Beyond pullover every day for 365 days just to see how it would hold up so that I could tell you guys, yes, I like this brand. Yes, their clothing holds up. Now, I have clothes from tons of other different outdoor brands. All I can say is, as, it, as of now, nothing holds up like Beyond. The pair of pants and the pullover that I wore for every day for a year looks exactly like the day that I got it. And in fact, I'm taking both of them on this trip to Antarctica. So I am a huge believer in this brand, even though I have no contact with them. I am not sponsored by them at all. I just like what they make. That's number four. And working in tandem with number four is number five. And this is a great thing to have, whether you're in going to Antarctica or you're going to, look, I'll just peek through here like this. This is their ARC 2.0 rain layer. And this thing, again, talk about being overbuilt. This thing is unbelievable with the number of pockets and zips and vents and the, the density and basically the thickness of this rain layer is really incredible. I'll put links in the description below for where you can find this stuff. Some of which, by the way, is in their outlets, outlet side and it's on sale right now. I also have the pants to go with the, the rain jacket. So the combination of the L7, the, the warmth layer co combined with the rain layer, that's gonna be really helpful for me when I'm standing out on the deck for long periods of time, blowing image after image of birds that are too fast for me to photograph. I can already tell what's gonna happen. Those are the five things that I'm taking that I feel are kind of essential. So again, Fujifilm, 200 millimeter F2 with a 1.4 converter and the X-H2. Beautiful piece. Nikon Trailblazers. Trusty journal and Oto pen. And my warmth layer and my rain layer. I think between those, now I've packed 2,500 other objects to go on this trip, but you get my point. That's what I'm taking with me. And I'm hoping to also take you with me as I do some sort of daily visual journals and visual diaries as we go along because uh, this is a pretty going to be a pretty interesting trip. So hope you guys are well. I may or may not see you before the end of the year. And if I don't, I will see you in 2024. I will be one year older because, yes, I will spend my birthday on the ice in Antarctica. Talk to you then. I forgot something. You get a bonus tip. Did I say five of my top packing items? Actually, it was supposed to be six because I had to buy a pair of boots. These are Eddie Bauer Snoqualmie boots that I got for half off, by the way. These are waterproof and insulated boots. 
Yes, I live in northern New Mexico. Yes, it snows. Yes, it's tons of winter here. And uh, I've never had a pair of insulated uh, waterproof boots ever in my entire life. So I had to buy these because uh, I was thinking about standing on the deck in my trail running shoes. And my wife looked at me and said, you know, I know you have a college degree, but um, you might want to rethink that. So I actually went out and bought these. Again, these are half off right now, probably sold out by now. But yes, Eddie Bauer insulated insulated boots, which I can also wear if we're fortunate enough to get out of Zodiacs and onto the ice. I could also wear them as well, thinking positively. But yes, so this was your bonus tip. Six things that I'm taking to Antarctica.